Hi everybody, we've been covering correlation pretty well here, and once you understand correlation, sort of a natural progression is to move into something called regression. It's just a little bit more of an advanced step after a correlation. We'll see how that works today. Now, you can do very advanced kinds of regressions. We're just going to introduce the very basic concept here and do the simplest kind of regression available. But it should be helpful uh, as you start to understand these concepts. So a quick recap, of course, is that a correlation is just sort of a summary of the relationship between two continuous variables. It just tells us about how strongly they appear to be related and in what direction, positive or negative. Now, that's very interesting. However, it, it's limited also. What we might like to do then is, the, is have the ability to predict the value of one of the variables based on the other. And it turns out that makes a lot of sense if you know that they're correlated. If I say that, hey, your salt intake is strongly correlated with your, uh, I don't know, likelihood of a heart attack, then you go, oh, well, then I want to reduce my salt intake, for example, as long as they're positively correlated. But with uh, regression, we can actually now give you, we can quantify that relationship a little bit better and tell you exactly what your, well, we can predict exactly your likelihood, for example, of a heart attack if we know your daily salt intake or something like that, right? So that's what we're going to do. It's called regression. And as I said, there are very advanced forms of doing this. There are things called multiple, multiple regression. It's a very useful tool. However, it's very advanced, so we're not going to talk about that here. We're just going to do a very basic idea here. So again, let's just take a look at a, at a scatter plot, right? Now, a correlation will give you an idea of the scatter plot's slope, the general kind of slope of the uh, of the the general pattern here, right? And it also sort of gives you some idea of just how close together these dots are uh, along some kind of imaginary line that we don't see there. Okay. Now that's very useful. However, what I can't do here is exactly predict very carefully what the value of one of these variables would be based on the other. Let's imagine for a second that I have somebody in a group and they, they weigh, let's say, 200 pounds. And I want to guess what their height is based on their pounds. Well, that's kind of tricky. What you can do is kind of estimate, given the other dots here, it seems like it would probably be in this area somewhere, right? Well, that's something, but that's all I can do with correlation. Now with regression, it will allow me to apply a specific value to my guess so that it's less of this sort of guesswork and it's based actually on the data relatively objectively. Okay, let's take a look at the equations so we can start to understand how to actually calculate things. Okay, so what we want to do is more clearly give a precise estimate for one of the variables if we know the value of one of the other variables or of the other variable. This is the equation. It's y with a little hat guy, I'm going to explain that in a minute, equals a plus bx. Now, so far, we don't really know what any of these mean, except, of course, x. x is familiar. We've also seen y. We don't really know what that hat means yet. So I'm going to explain that in just a moment here. Okay, but this is the equation for a line in a two-dimensional plane, like on a scatter plot. Okay, now that may sound familiar because you probably used equations like that. Uh, let me talk about that just a little bit more. All right, if this is the equation for the slope of a line, uh, you've probably used that before, except you may re recall it as y equals mx plus b, right? Where m was the slope of the line, the rise over the run, you may recall that. x was the variable that you were uh, starting off with, like the value of the x variable or the, the value along the x axis, and b was the intercept, right? Uh, that's essentially what we're doing here. I've just switched around some of the uh, letters here because we're going to use them for our purposes. Okay, now the Y with the hat then, anytime you see a Roman letter that has a little hat over it in statistics means that this is a value that we are predicting. It is a predicted value of Y, in other words. In this case, we have two variables. We have the variable along the X axis. We're calling that variable X, although you could call it whatever you want. And then there's a variable that we charted along the Y axis that we're calling variable Y. I do that just for simplification, just for uh, simplicity, but uh, that's how we do that. So if that is the predicted value of y, that's what we're trying to figure out the value of y is going to be from the value of x, as you can see there. Now, a then, of course, becomes the intercept. In other words, it's the, uh, the y-intercept or where the line will cross that y-axis. You could also think of it as it's the value of the y variable or our predicted value of the y variable if x is equal to 0. Now, again, we're going to go over an example in the next video where this should make a lot more sense. I'm just explaining these basic ideas here. And then B in this case is the slope of the line. In other words, it's the rise over the run, or it's 
how much uh, variable y rises for every one unit increase in the value of the x variable. And again, I'll show you that as well. And of course, I already said that x, this uh, x up here, is the, uh, the value we know about x. So in this case, we're predicting the value of the y variable when we already know the value of the x variable. But of course, we have to know the values of a and b. And I'll show you how to do that later. But let's take a look at those equations now. So b represents the slope, as I said. And um, so it makes a lot of sense that if we're talking about how much we rise over our run, that it should actually depend quite a bit on the correlation coefficient or the strength of that correlation, because that gives us some idea of just how much that slope uh, rises. And so here's our equation. Now, this is pretty straightforward stuff, obviously. This is the correlation coefficient that we've calculated for these two variables. If that doesn't sound familiar, we made a video, we, I made a couple of videos explaining correlation and the correlation equation and how to actually co uh, calculate a correlation coefficient. This, of course, is the standard deviation of the y variable, the standard deviation of the x variable. If you don't know how to calculate those, I also made videos about how to calculate standard deviations uh, about any single variable. In this case, you just have to do it for both variables. Or you can have a computer do it also. That's fine, too. Uh, you'll notice here that the y variable is the one in the numerator, not the x variable variable. That sometimes confuses people because they naturally assume, well, x comes before y, so x should be on the top. Um, not in this case, however. And that should make some sense if you think really deeply about this, because essentially what it's saying is, as your y variable gets more dispersed along the y-axis, the b, or the slope, will get more, uh, will get steeper. So that makes a lot of sense, and that's exactly why um, the y variable goes in the numerator. Now let's talk about how we calculate a. Okay, A, of course, is the point at, on the y-axis where the line that we're computing is going to intersect that y-axis. Or, in other words, it's what the value of y is predicted to be if we know that x is equal to 0, or if x did equal 0. This is the equation. This actually should look kind of familiar, and you should be able to guess what this is if you've been watching these videos in sequence anyway. So we obtain the intercept of the y variable by taking the mean of the y val variable minus the slope of the line that we already computed in the previous slide multiplied by the mean of the x variable. Okay, So in other words, you do have to calculate the mean for the y variable and the mean for the x variable in order to do this. If you're not familiar with doing that, I, of course, have previous videos in this, uh, in this playlist um, that explain how to calculate the mean. All right, and again, this is a, a little unfortunate, but you do have to know B before you can calculate A, uh, but that's that's fine. It's not difficult to do, and we'll walk you through the example in the next video, of course. Okay, so we will try out this uh, cal these calculations in this next video, and uh, bear with me, and uh, I'll see you then.